What did he do 
with the rent. Is he here? No. And who, may I ask, are you? He's not here, Doctor. Okay. Doctor Chumley's coming anyway. What's your name? Chumley? Well, well, I've got something to say to him. Your name is Harriet. I am Judge Daffy. Now, where is Chumley? You see, the reason I asked your name is because the doctor always likes to know who he's talking to. The guy that says his name is Judge Daffy, Doctor. Well, well, Chumley. Good evening, Judge. Let's not waste time. Has he been here? Who? Elwood. No, but see here, Doctor. Of course he hasn't been here. He's smart now. He'll be hiding. The awful job to smoke him out. It will be more difficult, but I'll do it. They're sly, they're cunning. But I get them. <laughs> <laughs> I always get them. Have you listed places to be Ben Wilson? Right here, Doctor. Read it. We've been to 17 bars. Eddie's place, Charlie's place, Betsy's bar dance. 4th Avenue Firehouse, the 10th, 12th, the 9th Avenue Firehouse, just to make sure. The Union Station, the Grain Elevator. Say, why does this guy go down to a Grain Elevator? Yeah, well, the poor man is a friend of his. He has many friends in many places. I have stopped by her to ask Mrs. Simmons if she has any other suggestions as to where we might find him. Dr. Chumley, I have to inform you that Mrs. Simmons has retained me to file a suit against you. What? For what happened to her at the sanitarium this afternoon. A suit? And while we're on that subject... This should be free, Doctor. After we waste all that time dragging your tail all over town looking for that guy. What happened this afternoon was an unfortunate mistake. I discharged my assistant who made it, and I plan on taking charge of this man's case personally. That <laughs> interests me. Oh. And my interest in the case is something no amount of money can buy. But, but this business this afternoon, Doctor... Water under the dam! This is why I see this thing. I see it this way. The important item now is that we get this man down back to the sanitarium where he belongs. Well, that's right, Judge. That's what I think. May I introduce Miss Myrtle May Simmons, Mr. Dowd's niece and Mrs. Simmons' daughter. <laughs> How do you do, Dr. Chumley? How do you do, Miss Simmons? Hello, Myrtle. <laughs> Hello. Now then, let me talk to Mrs. Simmons. Mother, I'll come down. I know she will. You try to get her to talk to him, Judge. But see here, your mother was manhandled. She was, well, well, God knows what she was. This man's approach on her was not professional. It was personal. Wilson, uh, this is a serious charge. Doctor, I've been working with you for nearly 10 years now. Are you going to take the word of a, sorry, what's your name again? Gaffney, Judge Omar Gaffney. Thank you. Are you going to take the word of so blessed again? Wilson, me, me and Davis, she's a rabbit? It is not Mrs. Simmons who sees the rabbit, it's her brother. Yes, it's Uncle Elwood. Now, if you'll come with me, Doctor. Very well. Wilson, I have a situation here. Wait for me. Okay, Doctor. So your name's Myrtle Hank, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, if we catch your uncle, you're liable to be coming down to the sanitarium on visiting days. Really? I don't really know. Well, if you do, I'll be there. Well? Yeah. And if you don't see me right away, don't give up. Just wait. I'll be there. You will. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, did you get the doctor to tell me to wait for him? Yeah. Well, uh, while I'm waiting, I should have used a sandwich and a cup of coffee. <coughs> Certainly. If you'll forgive me, I'll proceed you to the kitchen, which is... Well, not so bad, bro. What? Yeah, doctor noticed as soon as he walked in, he asked me a trick. Oh. <laughs> Tell you something else, bro. What? You know, you not only got a nice bill, but uh, <laughs> hey, you got something else. What? You got the screwiest thing ever stuck his face in our nut house. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktail party. I was able to leave quite a few of my cards, and the people there were very lovely. 
I stayed until you phoned and said you couldn't come because a patient had escaped. <laughs> Where am I? Well, I'm here. <laughs> but I must be going soon. I, I have to find Harvey. Well, well, Mrs. Chumley, my regards to you and anyone else you happen to run into. Goodbye, my dear. Oh. There it is!
<laughs> but I know where he is. He's at Charlie's place. That's a bar over at 12th and Main. 12th and Main? That's two blocks down on one over, isn't it? <laughs> Dr. Charlie, where are you going? I'm going to get that man down and take him back to the sanitarium where he belongs. Oh, Dr. Chumley, don't do that. Send one of your attendants. I'm warning you. Miss Simmons, if I am to help your brother... He can't be helped! There is no help for him! <laughs> he must be picked up and locked up and left. You consider your brother a dangerous man? Dangerous? Why? Well, I won't tell you why, but if I didn't, why would I be asking for a permanent commitment for him? Then I must observe this man. I must see the expression on his face when he talks to this rabbit. He does talk to the rabbit, you say? They tell each other everything. What's that? I said, of course he talks to him. But don't go after him, Doctor. You will regret it if you do. Since you underestimate me, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, no, Doctor. You underestimate my brother. Not at all. I can handle him. You can handle him. That's what you think. Colonel Bay, see who was in the bathtub. <laughs> Did he go upstairs? 
not knowing I cannot say that. Those flowers look lovely against your hair. Oh, thank you. I've never worn great orange. It's such a trying color. Oh, you would improve any color, my dear. Oh, thank you. Did Johnny go to his house? I, I don't know. Where is Dr. Sampson? In his office there, I think. Dr. Sanderson, I couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Uh, Just a minute, Dad. Where is Dr. Trump? Oh, is he coming with us? That's nice. I, I haven't had outside a few minutes until he could get away. I don't know, Doctor. Oh, I must apologize for being a few seconds late. I thought Miss Kelly should have some flowers. After what had happened this afternoon, the flowers really should be coming from you. As you grow older and pretty women pass you by, you will think with deep gratitude of these generous girls, are you? Hmm. Shall we go now? Just a minute, Dad. The situation has changed since we met this afternoon. Well, I urge you to have no resentments against Dr. Shumley. He is your friend and nobody wants to help you. Why? I'm glad to know that. I'd like to help him, too. If you're beginning by taking a cooperative attitude, well, that's half of that. We all have to face reality now, sooner or later. Doctor, I've wrestled with reality for 40 years now, and I'm proud to say I finally won out over it. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you, Miss Kelly, come join me downtown now? Here you are! Upstairs, buddy! We're going upstairs! Is the doctor okay? There must be some mistake. Uh, Miss Kelly, Dr. Sanderson, and I were going out to have a drink. I'd be glad for you to come and join us, Mr. Wilson. Wilson. They have a wonderful floor show. Yeah? yeah. Well, where do you see the floor show we got? <laughs> Upstairs, buddy. Just a minute, Wilson. Where is Dr. Shumley, Mr. Guy? Uh, as I said, he did not confide his plan to me. Wait, you mean the doctor ain't showed up yet? Not yet. Well, where is he? That's what we're trying to figure out. Mr. Dow walked in here by himself. Oh, he did, eh? Listen, you start talking, I'm working you over. I'd rather you not do that. <laughs> I'd rather you not even mention such a thing in the presence of a lovely young lady such as Miss Kelly. Uh, Mr. Dow, Dr. Chumley went into town to pick you up. That was over four hours ago. Four hours ago? Where has the evening gone? Uh, listen to that. Smart, eh? Let me handle this, Wilson. You say you did see Dr. Chumley tonight? Yes, he did. He came into Charlie's place around dinner time. Uh, it is a cozy spot. Let us all go there and talk it over with a tall one. Oh, no. We're going no place. Now, I'm asking the questions. If you don't butt your lip and give me some straight answers, I'm going to beat him at <laughs> What you suggest is impossible. What? what? You suggest that I button up my lip and give you some straight answers. <laughs> that can't be done. <laughs> Let me handle this, Wilson. You say Dr. Chomley did come into Charlie's place. Yes, he did, and I was glad to see him. Go on. He had asked the proprietor for my name and naturally brought him over to me. Uh, we exchanged the conventional greetings. I said, how do you do, Dr. Chomley? And he said, how do you do, Mr. Dowd? I believe we said that at least once. <laughs> and then? I'm trying to be factual. I then introduced him to Harvey. To who? Six feet? Uh, it's six feet, one and a half. Well, that's it. Spend all your time in this room while the doctor's probably bleeding to death in some ditch. But if those were his plans for the evening, he did not tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, though. Uh, he sat down with us. Uh, I sat on the outside, and Dr. Chumley sat on the inside, and Harvey was seated directly across from him so Dr. Chumley could look at Harvey. That's right. Spend all night on the seat arrangements. Harvey then urged to me that I buy him a drink. Uh, knowing that he does not like to drink alone, I urged Dr. Chumley that we join him. And then? Well, we joined him. Go on, go on. We joined him again. And so? Well, we just kept right on joining him. Oh, skip all the joining already! You're asking me to skip a large portion of the evening. <laughs> Tell us what happened. Come on, please. Dr. Chumley and Harvey got into a conversation. Quietly at first, but later it became rather heated, and Dr. Chumley raised his voice. Yeah, why? Uh, well, Harvey seemed to think that Dr. Chumley should take part in the financial responsibility of the joint, but Dr. Chumley did not want to seem to do that. I can believe that part. <laughs> why? Let this guy talk. He's got guts. I agree to take the whole thing because I don't like anything making any fuss. Uh, me and Harvey go down to Charlie's a lot, and the proprietor is a very fine man with an interesting approach to life. Then the other matter came up. Oh, come with the damn double talk and get on with it! Mr. Wilson, you are a sincere type of person, but I insist you must not use that language in front of Miss Kelly. You're right, Dad, we're sorry. You say the other matter came up. Yes, a beautiful blonde woman, a Miss Smettles, I believe. 
and her escort were seated in the seat directly across from us. Uh, Dr. Trumley got up and went over to talk to her, saying that they had once met in Chicago, I believe. Uh, her escort then escorted him back to our table, uh, saying that he should mind his own affairs. Does he have any? Does he have any what? Does he have any affairs? Well, how should I? <laughs> Please hurry, Mr. Dunn. We're all so worried. Oh, yes. Dr. Trumley then urged Harvey to join him at Blondie's Chicken Inn. Harvey wanted to go to Eddie's instead. Uh, while they were arguing, I went over to the bar to get another drink, and when I came back, they were gone. Well, where did they go? I mean, where did the doctor go? I don't know. I came out here to go, Miss Kelly and Dr. Sanderson, hoping that later we would find Harvey and the doctor and make a party. <laughs> so, you're satisfied? You got a story. Okay, pal, you're lying, and I know it! I never lie, Mr. Wilson. You need something with the doctor, I'm gonna find out what it is! Don't touch him, Wilson. Maybe he's lying, Wilson. That's all this guy is a bunch of lies! You two don't really believe this story about the doctor sitting there talking to some rabbit, do you? Well, maybe Dr. Charlie did go to Charlie's place. And saw a big rabbit, I suppose. Well, and why not? Harvey was there. <laughs> The, the doctor seemed a little frightened about Harvey at first, but that turned into an admiration as the evening wore on. The evening wore on. What a lovely phrase. <laughs> With your permission, I'd like to say it again. The evening wore on. With <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to not take that throat! Mr. Wilson, haven't you some old friends you can go play? Oh, the nerve of this guy! He couldn't come out here with an ordinary case of DT's, no! He comes out here with a six-foot rabbit! Well, as stimulating as all this really is, but I must be getting downtown. Hello, yes, Charlie's place is Dr. Tony and you are on there. He was there with Mr. Dowd earlier in the evening. Don't bite my head off. Boy, that man was bad. He, he said Mr. Dowd was welcome any time, but his friend was not. Oh, that's Mr. McNulty, the bartender. He thinks a lot of me. Uh, now, why don't we all go down there and have a drink? Wait a minute! Mr. Dowd. Yes, my dear. May I hold your hand? Yes, if you want to. Poor Mrs. Chelly is so worried. Isn't there anything you may have forgotten to mention? Anything at all? For you, I will do anything. I'd almost be living to live my life over it. <laughs> almost. But I've told it all. You sure? Quite sure. But ask me again anyways, won't you? I like that warm tone in your voice you had just then. <laughs> so did I. Oh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, I must be done. I have things to do. Uh, Mr. Dow, what is it you do? What? Me and Harvey go into the bars and we sit, we chat, we have a drink, uh, we play the jukebox. Soon the faces of other people turn toward ours and say, We don't know you, mister, but you are a lovely fellow. Mm -hmm. We take on all, me and Harvey take on all these warm moments. We've entered as strangers and soon we have friends. Well, they come over to us, and they sit with us, and chat with us, and drink with us. Uh, they tell us about the big, terrible things that they've done, the big, wonderful things that they'll do. Their loves, their hates, their regrets, their hopes. All very large, because no one brings anything small into a bar. I then introduce them to Harvey, and well, he's bigger and grander than anything they've offered me. When they leave, they leave impressed. The same people seldom come back, but that's envy, my dear. There's a bit of envy in all of us. Too bad, isn't it? How did you happen to call him Harvey? Uh, well, Harvey is his name. Well, how do you know that? Well, that is an interesting coincidence, Doctor. One night, several years ago, while I was walking down Fairfax Street between 18th and 19th. Do you know that street, Doctor? Yes, yes. Well, I had just, just helped Ed Hickey into a taxi. Ed had been mixing his ride with his gin and needed a little convey. As I walked, I heard a voice call out, Good evening, Mr. Dowd. I turned. And there was this great white rabbit leaning against the lamppost. Well, I thought nothing of it. Because if you've lived in a town for as long as I lived in this one, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. <laughs> so I walked up to him, and he said to me, Ed Hickey looks a little spit this evening, or may I be mistaken? Well, of course he wasn't mistaken. I think all the world of Ed, but he was spit. <laughs> so we chatted, and finally I said, You have the advantage of me. You know my name, but I don't know yours. Right back at me, he said, What name do you like? 
I didn't have to think for a minute. Harvey has always been my favorite name. So I said to him, Harvey. And this is the interesting part of the whole thing. He said to me, what a coincidence. My name happens to be Harvey. Mr. Dowd, what's your father's name? John, John Frederick. Mr. Dowd, when you were a child, did you have a playmate? Someone with whom you spent many happy carefree hours with? Oh, yes, I did, didn't you, Doctor? Yes, what was his name? Vern, Vern McElhaney. Did you know the McElhaney's doctor? No. Uh, well, there were a lot of them, and they circulated. Wonderful people. <laughs> Think carefully, Mr. Dowd. Was there anyone at any time with whom you knew by name of Harvey? Did you ever know anybody by that name? No, Doctor. No one. Maybe that's why I had such high hopes for it. Come on, Mr. Dowd, er, come on, Mr. Wilson. Let's take Mr. Dowd upstairs. Oh, no. I'm taking him no place. You made this your show you want it. Let him sit here forgetting all about Dr. Chumlin. It's your show you want it. Come on, Mr. Dowd. Come on, Edward. All right, Lyman, but I can't stay too long. I promise Harvey I'd take him to the floor show. Nuts. <laughs> Dr. Chum, are you okay? Of course I'm okay. I'm being followed. Lock that door. Yes, sir. Oh. Who's following you? None of your business. <laughs> Is it perjury or is it something we can cut? 
out. I ask for your opinion, Doc. I've been looking all over for you. Dr. Sanderson, disregard what I said this afternoon. I want you on my staff. You were a very astute young man. Oh, I mean, did you hear? Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, what is your decision? Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I must be alone with this man. Will you please only do one of my diagnosis shortly? Do hurry, doctor. I will. Elwood, you stay here. <laughs>
It's your two weeks. <laughs> Cold beer and Akron in one last fling. God, man. Uh, would you like to lie down for a while? <laughs> no. No. No, 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 no. Tell me. <clears throat> Mr. Dell. Could he? Would he do this for me? He could, and he might. I've never heard him say one bad thing against Akron. Uh, by the way, where is Harvey, Doctor? Why? Why don't you know? Well, the last time I saw him, he was with you. Oh. Uh, you know what? He might be down at Charlie's place. Yes, yes, that's it. He's down at Charlie's place. Well, that's it. Oh, oh, no, 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 Mr. Dad, not there. You see. Well, I can't leave without saying goodbye to my friend, Dr. Sanderson. Mr. Dowd. Dr. Sanderson is not your friend. <laughs> None of these people are your friends. I'm your friend. Well, I'm glad to know that. I'm yours too, Doctor. Oh, and this sister of yours, she's the bottom of the conspiracy against you. She's trying to persuade me to lock you up. Earlier today, she had commitment papers drawn up. She has your power turning the key to your safety box. She brought you out here. She did all that in one afternoon? <laughs> well, she is certainly a whirlwind. <laughs> God, man, haven't you any righteous indignation? Doctor, my mother used to say to me, in this world, Elwood, she always called me Elwood, naturally. She said, in this world, Elwood, you may be oh so smart or oh so pleasant. Well, for years I was smart. I recommend pleasant. You may quote me. Just the same. I will protect you if I have to commit her. Would you like me to do that? Well, not unless Vita wanted it that way. Oh, not that you don't have a nice place or anything, but I'm pretty sure Vita would prefer it if she stayed home with me, Harvey, or Comet. Oh, Miss Kelly! The diviner grace has never brightened that enchanting face. Uh, Ovid's fit elegy. Uh, my dear, you will never look lovely. I'll never feel happy, Mr. Dowd, I know. Oh. Yes, sir. I wonder if I can remember any more of that before. Yes. Say, this Brandon Gang's a good one. Kelly's never kissed me. Ovid has always been my favorite poet. Mm. Okay, Pally, you discharged this way out. Wilson, take your hands off of that man. What? Apologize to Mr. Dell. Apologize to the guy with the red. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> I apologize. This is the door. <laughs> if I leave, I'll remember. <laughs> this is Mr. Dowd, Mr. Dowd. Women often come up to you and kiss you like Miss Kelly did just now? Yes. <laughs> yes, I encourage it too. To <laughs> <laughs> hell with decency. <laughs> I've got to have that racket. Go ahead and knock. Dr. Sanderson, I couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Just a minute, Doug. Do you agree with my diagnosis, Doctor? Yes, yes, yes. Call them all in. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> Simmons, Judge Gaffney, will you step in here, please? Is it settled? I find I concur with Dr. Sanderson. Well, thank you, Doug. Yes. What a relief! Goodbye. Well, let's celebrate. I've got some new bars listed in the back of this book. <laughs> <laughs> this injection here is a violent reaction. We can't give it to him without his consent. Will he give it? Of course he will, if I ask him. To give up this rabbit? I don't think so. Well, don't ask him, just give it to him. That's his barn dance, Blondie's chicken in, better late than never, Benny's drive-in. No! We'll go to Benny's drive-in. Oh, we should phone ahead for a table. How many of us will there be, Tommy? One, two... Oh, Edward! Mr. Dowd! Mr. Dowd! I have a formula here, 977, it'll be good for you. Will you take it? Yes? Elwood, you won't see this rabbit anymore. Oh, but you will see your responsibilities and your duties. Well, if you've thought of it, Doctor, I'm sure it's a very fine thing. And if I happen to come across anyone who wants it, I'll be glad to recommend it. <laughs> for myself, I wouldn't care for it. Hear that, Judge? Hear that, Doctor? That's what we have to put up with! Vita, do you want me to take this? Elwood, I'm only thinking of you. You're my brother, and I've known you for years. I'd do anything for you. That Harvey wouldn't do anything for you. He's making a fool out of you, Elwood. Don't be a fool. I won't. Why, you could amount to something. You could be sitting on the Frederick County School Board Family Life Unit right now if you only want to ask them. Well, all right, Vita. If 
that's what you want, me and Harvey will go over and ask tomorrow. Tomorrow? We well, never want to see another tomorrow. Madame Burma and I will live in the house with that cravat. Our friends will never come to see us. We have no social life. We have no life at all. We're both miserable. I wish I were dead. Oh, but maybe you don't care. <laughs> I always wanted Vita to have everything she needs. Vita, are you sure? All right, doctor, I'll take it. Where do I go? In Sanderson's office now. Say goodbye to the old fellow for me, won't you? How long will this take, Doctor? Only a few minutes. Why don't you wait? We'll wait. Dr. Sanderson said it wouldn't take long. Mother, don't fidget. Oh, how can I help it? Mother, what does I look lovely in this dress? Yes, dear, but let me get a good night's sleep first. Change is a 
Well, I certainly hope so. But you ain't kidding. When we drive out here, we watch the sunsets, we look at the birds. Sometimes we look at the birds when there ain't no birds, and we watch the sunsets when it's raining. And then always, a big tip. But afterwards, oh, oh. Afterwards, oh, oh. What do you mean afterwards, oh, oh? Crab, crab, crab. They owe me to watch the lights, to watch the brakes, watch the intersections. It's like they ain't got no faith in me or my buggy. But it's the same cab and the same driver driving on the same road that's come up here. And then afterwards, no tips. But my brother would have tipped you anyway. He's very generous. Always has been. Not after this, he won't be. Lady, after this, he's going to be a regular old human being. And we both know what kind of bastards they can be. Glad I met you. I'll wait. Oh, Judge Gaffney, little baby, stop it, stop it, don't give it to him. Elwood, come out of there. Well, you can't do that, Dr. Chumley's giving the injection. I don't want Elwood to have it. I don't want Elwood that way. I don't like people like that. Stop, Waterford, Judge, I mean, Mom, stop this. You be quiet. I've lived longer than you have. I remember my father, I remember your father, I remember this. What is all the commotion? Stand off again, Doctor. She wants to stop the injection. You have it. You haven't already given it to him, have you? No, but we're ready. Take Mrs. Simmons away, Wilson. Leave me alone! Get your head off me, you white slaver! You don't know what you want. You didn't want that rabbit either. And what's wrong with Harvey? If Elwood, Myrtle May, and I want to live with Harvey, it's nothing to you. You don't even have to come around. Our business. Elwood. Elwood. Hello there, Vita. Vita's all tired out. She's done a lot today. <laughs> have it your own way. I'm not leaving my game at the club again, no matter how big the animal is. <laughs> Come on, Edward. Let's get out of here. I hate this place. I wish I'd never seen it. But see here, I, it's whatever Vita says, Doc. Why, look at this. I must have been there all the time. I could have paid that cab driver myself. Harvey! Come on, Edwards, come on, little maid, hurry up! <laughs> Good night, Mr. Wilson. Good night. Good night, Dr. Chumley. Doctor? I've known for years what my family thinks of Harvey, but I've often wondered what Harvey's family thinks of me. Oh, well, there you are! Doctor, if, if you don't mind, you're standing in his way. 